Godzilla vs Kong is the highly anticipated culmination of Legendary's MonsterVerse saga, which began with Gareth Edwards' 2014 Godzilla reboot. The MonsterVerse has been gradually building up to this movie, with both Kong Skull Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters setting up the world of these kaiju and teasing this epic clash of the titans. Director Adam Wingard has done an incredible job of taking what was set up in those previous movies and delivering on some of the best kaiju action ever put on screen. The set pieces that you get in Godzilla vs Kong are absolutely begging to be seen on a massive cinema screen with a packed audience, ready to cheer for their favourite monster. With the MonsterVerse, Warner Brothers and Legendary have very deliberately followed the initial Phase 1 plan that Marvel set out with when creating the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We had Godzilla 2014 kickstarting the universe off like Iron Man did for Marvel, followed by a period piece movie with Kong Skull Island that opened up the MonsterVerse, which then led to having a bigger Godzilla sequel that blew down the doors on the MonsterVerse, revealing all the different storytelling possibilities in this universe. And now we have Godzilla vs Kong, basically the Avengers of this set of movies, which is almost solely focused on being the payoff to all the setup from the previous MonsterVerse films, and delivering the epic showdown that has been hyped up for years at this point. Godzilla vs Kong is a movie that was originally meant to be out in early 2020, and has since been delayed multiple times due to the massive impact that COVID has had on the film industry. What's kind of works in Godzilla vs Kong's favour though, is that because fans have waited so long for the film, and with cinemas just starting to reopen around the world, anticipation for Godzilla vs Kong is now at sky high levels, with audiences desperate to see a big blockbuster action film on the big screen. And I'm happy to report that Godzilla vs Kong delivers on being an all out roller coaster ride of an adventure movie that I think many people have been hoping to see for some time, at least as a means of experiencing some escapism after everything that 2020 put us all through. Every Every brawl between Godzilla and Kong is an incredible spectacle. It's clear that Adam Wingard and Legendary want to get you to these spectacular battles as quickly as possible, as that's what you're really paying to see. There are no instances of the camera pulling away as the action starts to ramp up, or having weather effects cover all the action. This is all pure, gorgeously shot and realised kaiju action, with filmmakers that want to make sure that they're delivering on the title of the movie. It's really satisfying to see that the MonsterVerse has finally cracked the code on how to effectively light their visual effects, especially in the neon coloured fight scenes, making sure there is always a plausible or creative use of lighting so that you can clearly see everything that's happening and get plenty of time with each monster looking as spectacular as you want them to look. And I'm someone who loved a lot of the action in Godzilla King of the Monsters, which attempted to present these gargantuan set pieces designed to resemble Renaissance era artwork, as well as realise these kaiju as godlike creatures. Features. As someone who grew up loving the Japanese Godzilla movies on VHS, these modern takes on kaiju action really helped realise what I was imagining the fights were actually like in those movies, totally and blissfully ignorant of all the rubber suits and bad English dubbing. The action in Godzilla vs Kong is boosted significantly by the appropriately bombastic music score by Junkie XL, which feels absolutely ground shattering depending on what sound system you're watching the movie on. A movie like Godzilla vs Kong is why you get someone like Junkie XL, who can bring big fun spins on the Godzilla and King Kong themes to deliver something that feels genuinely epic. According to the composer, a bass drum roughly 10 feet in diameter was requested to be used in the movie, which I think is just insane. Now with Godzilla vs Kong being so briskly paced and focused on getting us to the big fights, this does come at the cost of some genuine scene setting and build up. Godzilla vs Kong is structured to deliver just enough exposition to keep everything moving without ever really elaborating on things. For example, we get a brief bit of dialogue between Alexander Skarsgård and Rebecca Hall about how Kong came to be in their possession without the movie ever showing how that actually happened. Sure, the exchange gets the job done, but any sense of mystery or tension that could have been built around that setup is just tossed aside. And I get it. Godzilla vs Kong is meant to be a fun popcorn movie. There are bound to be some leaps in logic. It is definitely recommended to go along for the ride and just have fun. Looking back at the 2014 Godzilla, it's wild to see just how much of the tone in these movies has shifted, with the MonsterVerse leaning even more into the science fiction side of things with Godzilla vs Kong. And with so much focus on the Hollow Earth storyline in this movie, you're at the very least getting a Journey to the Center of the Earth movie with massive kaiju fights. So what's not to love about that? I think what seems to be missing from Godzilla vs Kong for me is a lot of the world building and setup for each conflict that we got in King of the Monsters, which elaborated on many of the monsters and why they were fighting each other. There was an effort at building a mythology with King of the Monsters that just isn't really present in Godzilla vs Kong. I can only hazard a guess that much of the world building was cut from this movie due to how exposition was handled and received in King of the Monsters. 
Also, just some spoilers for this next bit, an extra confrontation with the movie's main antagonist, Mechagodzilla, would have gone a long way in making him feel more threatening to Godzilla and Kong. The fight with Mechagodzilla is absolutely thrilling, don't get me wrong. I was just left wanting a bit more out of the character's big debut. Now, the weakest part of these movies is of course the human characters, just as they were in the Japanese Godzilla movies as well. In Godzilla vs Kong, the humans exist purely to deliver exposition to get us to the next battle, react to the monsters, or help patch story threads together. That information is not going to be surprising to anyone who's seen one of these MonsterVerse movies, and that's fine. Audiences want to watch Godzilla and Kong fight, not to listen to human squabbling, but the actors at least look like they're having fun with the material, even if they don't really have a lot to do. The best performances easily come from the actors doing the motion capture work for Godzilla and Kong, who, combined with the visual effects team, do a great job at breathing life into these giant monsters. What really surprised me with Godzilla vs Kong is how many homages to the original 1962 King Kong vs Godzilla have been packed in, which should please longtime Toho fans. There are a ton of modern updates to certain fight moves and scenes, as well as some loving visual references to keep an eye out for. Godzilla vs Kong is a good fun time at the movies that is absolutely worth seeing on the biggest screen possible, especially if you've been yearning to see a big blockbuster with a packed crowd. The movie might not be quite as rewarding for me personally as King of the Monsters was, but I think for most people wanting an enjoyable popcorn flick that doesn't overstay its welcome, then you're going to get that in spades with this movie. And if an extended cut of Godzilla vs Kong is out there, with more of the footage that was cut out, then I'll be here eagerly waiting to see it. Godzilla vs Kong gets a 7.8 out of 10 from me. Guys, I hope you like this review. If you want to see more reviews just like this one, stay right here for your motto fix. Bye guys. Bye guys.